sudden you start realizing why it's not working. It's an angle, correct? Angle position. So, you bring the hands up. You can see how nice it won't be because of that. <laughs> so, bring my hand here. I gently go a little bit up. So, the head straight is up last. I'm lucky it's a little bit. And then I roll. You see how I'm rolling? So, it's lock. And then I roll using two hands. And then I take a step. Because if I don't take a step, because I saw some of you when you do the technique, you're on any other side. You don't want them on the other side because they're in fight you. Is there any side? You want them on your stomach. But to do it correctly, when I roll him and I take a step, I'm stretching. So imagine there is a rocket and you want to stretch that rocket. So when I do this technique and I roll him, I stretch him. So he's on his stomach. If I don't stretch him, he will end up on his side. Bad idea because you fight me, you can be quick. So you, that stretch is very important to do. One more time. Here, lock the elbow, roll it. Simple, but it hurts so much. I have to chop his hand. If he grabs me, he has to pay for it. So the push won't make sure that he stays here. Step into him. It's a very good grab because he can If he's not falling because he wants to fall, because the pain in the wrist is very bad. Okay, drop, step. It's a good drop. Very slow motion because if I do quick, the wrist is going to drop. Then into the wrist, it's going down. The pain instant, like chops. It's an instant pain. So if I do it correctly, it's instant. Okay? You don't want to kick somebody much. So slowly, let's do it slow. You cover the hand, you step. Imagine that like, you're a sword, you have a sword in your hand and you're cutting it. But you need to bend the wrist. You cannot do the technique if the wrist is straight. So when I do the technique, I'm bending this wrist. That's the thing. <laughs> so let's try. The angle is bigger than 90 degrees. The pain is less, so he has more time to resist. That's why I make it 
night he greets him very quick. That's why I step to him. Because if I don't step to him, he will lock his hand. So then I have to do a different thing. That's why I step into him to pray that night he greets him. Plus, I'm breaking the distance so he doesn't kick me too much. Yeah? In Jiu Jitsu, we like to be close, close and fight. So we have better control of our opponent. That's why it gives me perfect opportunity to get closer. Also, I never extend my hands. If I want to come to me, I can keep the hands like this. I can see how much stronger. You just have to take a step like this. Very, very important. Just like chalk, so it's closer to you. Now, every technique in Jiu Jitsu has a counter. Every counter has another counter. So every technique that we practice has a counter to it. So let me show you the counter for this technique. He stepped into my elbow and by accident he passed out and knocked out. But I did a, just a counter. So as he attacked me, I just bent and I was rushed. Yes, my wrist is still there. And I'm not trying to resolve the issue. He didn't do a counter to this thing, he cannot be in pain But I just temporarily did a counter to me. And now I do a counter. I would just want to show you the other side of Jiu Jitsu that it's like a chess game. There is always, the, you know the technique, but there is somebody who knows the counter to the technique, which is a scary part. <laughs> so one more time. So as, I'm, uh, as he's doing the technique on me, you just bend your elbow into it, and there is counter, no way to do the technique to your adjust the angle. If you adjust the angle, then you can do it. But the double counter can <laughs> So one more time. Here and then like counter. You understand how counter works? Just bend into the So now, with your partner, one person is trying to do the technique, the other person is trying to do the counter. Yeah. Also, it is good setup for you to hit me in the groin or, or in some cues in the front kick or knee kick. So for me, it's dangerous position because he's holding me up, plus he's holding me. The good thing is, he's not going to use his hands because he's definitely too busy holding my hands. So all you have to worry about is head hitting me or his knees or legs hitting me. But also a dangerous position for him because if I know Jiu Jitsu, I will drop him very, very quickly. And very big. If I do it very quickly, his wrist is gone. Okay? So when you do this technique, well, I'm going to explain to you how to do it correctly. Do it slowly, don't do it quick. Because it's twice as more pain as this technique. Twice more pain, guys. Let's slow down. So you know why it's twice more pain? Because I'm using the elbow as a leverage. When you hit somebody with the elbow or using the elbow, it's uh, because of the mechanical leverage, your force is double. So when I do this technique, I trust his hand. It doesn't matter the channel, dark, it doesn't matter. Trust his hand. And with my elbow, I'm tight. He's dropping, I'm not doing anything yet. I'm just taking a step towards him. And instead of extending my hands, I'm using the weight of my body. You know how it should be. Step, and okay. let's try it. Please do it slowly. <laughs> The pain is in the wrist and forearm, guys. You have to attack the wrist. So the pain is in the wrist, so I chop. As I'm chopping, I'm physically attacking him. Stepping in here, he has his he has his head takes in the way, that's his problem, but the pain is in the wrist. So with my elbow, it's like I'm cutting it here with my elbow, like a sword. But I again I need to put his wrist in high degrees. Then the pain will be instant. <laughs> Here I step cut. And if I don't want to break his wrist, I don't go all the way halfway, and then we can walk. And then we can I think it's working anywhere I want. But the secret is there is also psychology of fighting. If you want to break his wrist, you break his wrist. 
But if you don't want to break his wrist and keep him in constant pain, you don't break the wrist, you just have to push it almost to the limit, but don't go beyond that limit. That means he's in a big pain, and psychologically, your opponent doesn't know how worse will it get if you break their, their hand. Because fear internally is more important than the pain. Pain comes in, and then you accept it as a pain. But if there is a pain, and you know it might get worse, there is internal fear inside of you. That's how you control your opponent's your internal fear. That's why if you don't want to, it's better sometimes not to break the hand, but keep it in constant pain. It's much, much better. So that's why when I'm here, then I lock his hand and bring my elbow to my body. And then I walk, he goes out directly me, but now psychologically he's defeated. Because he's in pain, he cannot do anything, and his body is listening to what I'm doing. So psychologically he's giving up. He's just saying, I'm done. Okay? So sometimes it's more important to put him in pain than to break the wrist. All right, so the next step, you don't have to deal with the wrist. You can ignore it completely and step directly into him. Okay? Wrist just gives you control or passive One, two, to pass your opponent. Okay? Two hand grabs in here, right? Because he's not going to punch him again, but he have a great control over his hands. So I can do many, many things. I can attack him using a classical way this way. I can come in here and walk him backwards so he doesn't know where he's going. But sooner or later I'm going to have to stop. And that's when he can attack me. So it's only temporarily transition. Or you can go and escort him up to the night one. Okay? So let's do this. It's a nice fun one. Two hand drop. I step. It doesn't matter how strong he is because I'm not attacking his muscles. I'm attacking his elbow, his joint. And I brought it tight into my body, but tight and controlling his elbow so he wouldn't slide and hit me. So I'm here. And then just slide it here, and then we go for a walk. The only thing he can do is try to roll out or fall. So the minute I see him going too low, I'm going to drop the body. If I don't drop the body, he will escape. So you may have to develop sensitivity with your opponent. You're not just there physically throwing him. You have to feel. It's like a dance. He's moving, so you have to feel where is he moving? What's he's up to? He's in pain, but you know, he might do some strange stuff. So, one, 